you're working all the weekends. You come to the lab late and you're trying to make up for that day by staying even later so that you feel less guilty about waking up late. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Today, I like to take a closer look into time management. I've already made a few videos about how to manage your project with a Gantt chart, how to track time, and how to manage your project with Trello. But today, I like to just call out four mistakes that a lot of PhD students may suffer from. One of the biggest time management mistake that PhD student could make was to have a plan for a really gigantic project. And I've already talked about that in my PhD mistake video, and I'm not going to repeat myself. But say for example, you have a two month plan and your advisor have given you suggestion in a meeting and given you a new project to do. The question to ask is what to do by when that means you need to break this down into a to-do list that is going to be followed by due dates that are broken down into micro pieces. Here's an example on the Kanban board. You have items that you have listed for this week and next week to be due. And every day you are going to work and you're showing up to move this post-it sticker from the to-do item to the doing. And by the end of the week, you should be finishing these tiny micro deadlines that is going to help you to meet the larger deadlines for your advisor and your own project. You're working all the weekends. You come to the lab late and you're trying to make up for that day by staying even later so that you feel less guilty about waking up late. As PhD, you're in charge of your own project and nobody is going to call you out even you come into the lab later. But there is a problem because imagine you have eight hours or 10 hours working in the lab. And this is just to illustrate your hour of work from Monday to Friday. This is what I've observed. If you arrive late in the afternoon, you may see a PI at 11 a.m. That moment, your PI might have decided that you are a lazy student. Also, notice that office hours are ending at 4 p.m. or 5 p.m., depending on which country you are. There are deadlines, there are emails that you have to reply right after you started your day. You are spending most of your prime energy in the morning to react to everything that is coming to you. And of course, if you are night out, you will tell me, oh, I work the best after working hour because everyone's gone. I'm the only few person in the lab. I feel less distracted. I will say, yes, this is going to work on the good days. But have you ever thought about the bad day in the lab when you are working alone at night? There are things like chemical spill, fire. There is a safety hazard if you don't have technicians, you don't have other full-time employees that are around you, you are surrounded by just PhD students or just simply a bad day from poor data and you want the shoulder to cry on. I'm not even joking because PhD students are more prone to be depressed. Could make it worse if you are letting yourself isolated in the evening. The end of the day, you get home at 11 p.m. You're feeling depressed because everything is closed, restaurant were closed, there's no social network that you're going to share time with. And as a human, I think this is the most isolating way to live someone's life and I know that PhD students are mostly introverted and it seems like a good idea at first. But if you are starting to feel depressed and you are seeing this journey as a very exhausting journey, I really hope you will give it a try to make yourself a morning person. Because if you start your day at 7.45 a.m., your advisor might see you in the office, so maybe the advisor will be nicer to you. In the afternoon, you're going to respond to email knowing that you had a long productive morning already. Moving on in your day, you're going to find out about some other events that are exciting to your research, like a regional conference that's free for PhD students. Only because you show up and you took the time to have coffee with other PhD students, 
by the end of the day, you're finishing at around maybe 6 p.m. You're going home, you might see a nice sunset. You might go to a yoga class with friends, you join dinner. You have a social life that is going to support you to run the marathon or PhD. If you're functioning 72 hours in the week with 20% capacity, would you rather be functioning at your 80% capacity and just be in the lab for 45 hours? When you're working continuously, you are not taking the time to be creative. The weekend is going to recharge your battery so that things that will take eight hours when you are tired, it may just take four. When you are writing especially, there are a lot of activity that are consuming your brain power. And if you are sleep deprived, if you are totally burned out, you are not performing as well. That is the energy management I'm trying to talk about. The third mistake is you have no idea how much time things will take. There's a famous last word in the lab. I just need two hours. And if you never check time and you just wing it every time you go to the lab and you have no clue how much time it will take, guess what? In the end, you might end up having to push through six hours of work. In the end, you feel exhausted. It's 4 p.m. You still haven't had lunch. True story. So today, I'd like to show that you could avoid this mistake by tracking time because not knowing how much time your work will take is a huge weakness to how you could schedule and maximize the productivity of your week. I talk about briefly how you need to know how long everything takes in the lab so that you can actually block out those time on your calendar. So when someone come up and ask you for help or another project discussion, you have that hour protected and you will know to say no. And if you have problem saying no, remember anything you say yes to require time. So anything you say yes to is an implicit no to other things. So if you are saying yes, to all the urgent tasks that are important for some other people's work or urgent tasks that you didn't schedule properly before, then your week will be a lot more overwhelming. So the easiest way to do it is to know how much time it would take and acknowledge that and give plenty of time to finish everything in advance on time. So if you know that experiment is going to run one hour and 30 minutes, then block off at least two hours on your calendar so that you're going to catch a breather and by the end of the day, you know you can complete those steps and you feel a lot better about that day. What I think is the most honest friend of PhD is a timer. And Toggle is a site that I use all the time to track everything I do in my project. And when I track my time, it's giving me an honest feedback on how slow or how fast I am so that I have a number in the future to manage and improve and I can reflect if this is the right task to do. When we say time management, it's not actually time management. It's about energy management. So you need to think about when is the best time to do what. You may think that you are working 10 hour, eight hour on that day but realistically, you may be working a lot more efficiently during the morning, the first two to four hours of the day, when your brain is clear and you were rested well from the night before. After lunch, most people will report a drop of energy towards the late afternoon. Whether this is true or not for your case, I want you to take a harsh look into how productive you get during the day and try to prioritize the higher speed bandwidth for the more challenging task. You could make these into different colors of post-it sticker and you make sure you have the high priority post-it sticker in red, for example, then you will be a lot more streamlined when you start your day and you want to refrain yourself from saying yes to irrelevant tasks. Maybe you're better off not going to that seminar and just finish your work to meet the deadlines. And it's important you keep yourself accountable for all of this priority because nobody else is going to do that. The non-urgent and important task. 
There are your thesis writing, your lab work, and analysis. A lot of you might have a calendar that look like this. My strategy of getting more done during the Monday to Friday so that I could actually afford having a weekend break was to start my day a little earlier and at least have 30 minutes of time writing in the morning. That really has set my day with the right tone and I could be a lot more productive by the end of that day. With that, you're going to develop a consistency and you are thinking and researching a lot more like a scholar instead of being driven by the day-to-day -day chaos in the lab. Notice that I don't have much schedule for the evening because I try to make sure I work out in the evening, at least have around 30 minute exercise every evening, cook dinner and go to bed early and start the next day early. Bear in mind, I wasn't the morning person, I was coming a long way to realize the value of having the morning hour. It was the key to my productivity and my sanity for the past couple of years. I wish I had pushed myself to do that. If I could do that, anyone watching this video would be able to do that too. I leave you with that. Please let me know in the comments if you have tried it. And I hope this advice is helpful to help you gain traction in your PhD project and have some internal peace when you're doing this PhD. Take care and thank you for watching my video. See you the next time.